Hi, I'm Shannon, owner of Pahrump Early Learning Academy, where we are more than just childcare. Hi, I'm Monique Mitchell with KPVM Television. My children attend Pella and they love it. The curriculum they have is pretty amazing and my children learn what they need at their level. Not only are the children learning, they're having fun and that's what matters. I like Pella. They help you with your homework and it's fun. Give us a call today to tour our facility at 751-5335. News 46 is brought to you by Comfort Hospice Care, where we give our patients and their loved ones peace of mind, knowing we provide the highest quality of care 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For more information, call 751-0349. Tonight on News 46, a new face emerges as a robbery suspect. The Pahrump Town board members are recognized. A family says farewell to their matriarch. News 46 starts now. You're watching KPVM News 46 with Deanna O'Donnell. News 46, local coverage you can count on. Good evening, it's Monday, December 29th, 2014. I'm Jennifer Muth sitting in tonight for Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Police are working a single vehicle rollover over this evening on Pahrump Valley Boulevard and Honeysickle Street. They are now no reported injuries. We will have more on the story on tomorrow's night's broadcast. A new video has been released regarding the Horizon Market robberies. Last week, News 46 aired a video with a man who had robbed the Horizon Market on Bell Vista three times and also broke into Coyote Corner Market once. That man wears the same clothing during his robberies. An orange ski mask, gray sweat pant shirt, and black pants. A new suspect robbed the Horizon Market on Bell Vista on November 4th. Police have just now released the video and audio of that person. The Nye County Sheriff's Office is asking for the public's help in identifying a suspect who robbed the Horizon Market on Bell Vista and Leslie on November 4th. The man is described as medium build, medium height, a Caucasian. At the time of the robbery, he was wearing a leather or vinyl jacket with a black hoodie underneath, gray sweatpants, and it appears to be gray Converse tennis shoes. The man appears to be at least 20 to 30 years old. The suspect entered through the front door of the Horizon Market on Leslie Street, was able to make contact with the clerk to the back of the store. He escorted the clerk up to the cash register where he used a handgun and was able to escape through the front door once again. If I see the reach under the counter and try to call the cops, I'm going to open the cash register. Put it in the fucking bag. Anything in the other one? The Nye County Sheriff's Office believe that the suspect may have possibly left on foot. If you know any information about this occurrence, you're urged to contact the Nye County Sheriff's Office at 751-7000. This is Deanne O'Donnell for News 46. The Indonesian government has asked the U.S. to help in the search for the missing Air Asia jet that disappeared during a flight from Indonesia to Singapore Sunday. The State Department received a request today to help locate the plane carrying 162 people. The Airbus 320 vanished Sunday morning in airspace thick with storm clouds on its way from Indonesia to Singapore. After the break, News 46 will return with your Desert View Hospital health tip. This portion of the news is brought to you by Inspiration Senior Living, where we provide affordable elegance to Pahrump area seniors. Give us a call at 751-2300 and make an appointment to tour our community. Plaque in the coronary arteries can obstruct blood flow to the heart and cause chest pain. A complete blockage can sometimes trigger a heart attack. However, many people are diagnosed with smaller amounts of plaque in their arteries. A new study examined whether these smaller blockages are also associated with an increased risk of heart attack and death. This health tip is brought to you by Desert View Hospital and Mountain Valley Physicians Group. Don't put your health on hold. We have time for you. Call us to schedule your appointment, 775-751-7100.
This is something no one wants to see, blockage of blood vessels in the heart. If somebody is having chest pain, it generally means that they have a plaque that is blocking more than 70% of the coronary artery. So we call that obstructive coronary disease. When patients have smaller amounts of plaque, they are diagnosed with what is known as non-obstructive coronary disease. We were concerned that perhaps those non-obstructive plaques did have a risk for causing a heart attack down the road. Dr. Thomas Maddox from the Denver VA Medical Center and co-authors examined angiograms of more than 37,000 U.S. veterans over a three-year period. This procedure can detect obstruction in the coronary arteries. The researchers wanted to see whether patients with smaller blockages had heart attacks or died in the year following their angiogram. Patients with non-obstructive disease had a two to five times higher risk of heart attack and death. We haven't been able to see that relationship before. All of these patients regardless of whether or not they had non-obstructive or obstructive coronary disease, had a higher risk for heart attack and death over that following year compared to patients who didn't have any coronary disease at all. Dr. Maddox says it might be time to think differently about how we categorize coronary artery disease. And rather than simply thinking about obstructive and non-obstructive, we should probably be thinking about any coronary artery disease versus no coronary artery disease. Catherine Dolph, The JAMA Report. It is also important for patients and their physicians to consider preventive medications and lifestyle changes to decrease the risk of having a heart attack. The Prompt Town Board form of government will be dissolved as of January 5th. The five board members and town manager Susan Holacek were honored during their last meeting. Tell me how the last town board meeting went. You know, I, I really thought the meeting went well. We, we had a full house. We actually anticipated maybe it might have gotten a little crazy, but it was arduous and it was long, but it was friendly. We had some laughs. It was fun, and so uh, I think it went well. How do you think it's going to go uh, in the coming year? Well, I think for the most part, from what I know, um, knowing that Pam Webster has so much authority, for instance, you know, she can approve things, I believe it's 50,000, you're not going to see as many things on their agenda that affect the town probably because she's going to have the ability to, to move the, those things forward. So once in a while you'll see some things um, on the county commissioners, but certainly not like we do now. And so what do you wish for these uh, five members that are now moving on? Uh, my prayers for their happiness, their health, uh, their safety, and for them to find something that's going to fulfill them. Obviously, they spent a lot of time, um, and I hope people again realize this, they are not compensated for all the time that they put in. And that's year after year, day after day. So I hope that they do find something that fulfills them like this. For the next few days, we'll be running the town board members' exit interviews. Today, we have Dr. Tom Waters and Amy Riches. You've been serving on the town board. Can you tell me some of the things that really stood out to you during your time that you served? I would have to say everything stood out. Mm -hmm. You know, just being able to serve this, the, the residents of Parump for four years has just been truly outstanding. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've thoroughly enjoyed the things that we tried to do the things that we were able to do with the parks and, and some of the other things. But we had a lot of accomplishments. And, you know, I didn't memorize to say exactly what the accomplishments were, but there were quite a few. And I think the people need to look at what we've accomplished in this town. We've kept taxes down. Some people say, look, you raised the taxes. But we maintain the level of, of things to, to our residents. And that's important. How did you think the last meeting went? I think the last meeting was good. It was something we, you know, there were, there were some things on the agenda that of course we could not prove. And of course we didn't. But the things that we could, the things on the agenda should have been just to say, look, we've enjoyed this. The last meeting was a wonderful meeting. It was a little contentious over the room tax and the uh, uh, throwing out Pahrump Ordinance, Town Ordinance 18. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve the people of this community. As far as being on the town board, I've had kind of a wild ride. I got elected, then I got, they tried to recall me, and then, um, and of course that didn't work, and then, um, but it has been a wonderful experience. After these messages, News 46 will be back.
Today's news is brought to you in part by Dr. George Leakes, Pahrump's optometrist since 1990, offering full-spectrum eye care for children and adults. Call today, 727-8300. Seventy-six-year-old Irene Wolfenstein passed away last week after a battle with cancer. Irene was married to Ray and leaves behind a very large loving family and friends. A funeral was held at the Church of Latter-day Saints on Wilson and West Street Saturday morning. A large procession followed the hearse to her final resting place. Irene and Ray Wolfenstein moved to Pahrump in 1972, where they started a motel business which is now Best Western and Draft Picks. The family, which still owns Wolfenstein Construction and other businesses' ventures, were one of the first families who founded our town and continue to be very involved in the future of Pahrump. An Act of Kindness Award was given to Ron Fraser recently. We like to, I like to present the Act of Kindness Award to Ron. And uh, like his wife said, she minds the store and Ron runs around, goofing around. And uh, it's an honor to be able to give this to Ron. Well, it's, it, it's a surprise. Uh, she normally she doesn't keep surprises from me, but uh, you know she's a big part of my life, and she's the one that allows me to do this. and And I'm just honored to be in the community. We've been here for 20 years, and uh, we like to give to people, and we don't expect these uh, awards. But it's a great honor to receive one. And like James says, at a Christmas time, it's a real honor. Thank you very much. Well, let me give you a little rundown of Act of Kindness. When I started this three years ago, it was a meant for the people of the community of Pahrump and I County, but it expanded. So this award has gone all the way to Afghanistan to the troops, Boston, Mass, Boston, Newtown, Connecticut, Aurora, Colorado, Prescott, Arizona, Sparks, Nevada, Grand Junction, Colorado. So I wanted it to mean something. And this comes from the citizens and the veterans of Prump, Nevada, and Nye County. Now here is Noah Began with today's Angie's List report. In the mood for chestnuts roasted on an open fire? For many families, gathering around a crackling fireplace is a holiday tradition. But you need to take the proper precautions. And today's Angie's List report, the mistakes that could burn you. Skipping annual chimney inspections and cleanings can lead to big problems. So before you cozy up in front of the fireplace, make sure it's in good working order. If you live in a brand new house and don't really use your fireplace, you may not need a yearly inspection. But if you live in an older home, they are very important because you might find that your foundation has settled, which can pull the liner away and it can start to separate. So you want to be sure it's in good condition each year. If the crack is large enough to fit a nickel inside of it and or it's broken all the way through and the whole panel flexes on that crack, then it's probably time to replace that panel. If those cracks are smaller than that and very superficial in nature, then it's not necessary to replace the panel at that time. Edges List says if a certified chimney specialist uncovers a problem, don't simply take their word for it. Demand proof. So it's important to see, I think, photographic proof of whatever it is that you might be indicating that they have a problem with so they can see that for themselves. When talking with your inspector, be sure that they're using the pictures in a way that you can actually see things that identify your house in particular. Unfortunately, the most common scam that we hear about is when a chimney inspector uses pictures from another house. So you want to be sure the pictures that you're looking at are your house and the damage to your chimney. Experts say another common mistake homeowners make is failing to use firewood that's seasoned and dry. It also, the wood needs to be split because the bark on uh, a tree actually holds moisture in. So once the wood is split and stacked, and then it needs to dry for six months to a year and be covered. While gas fireplaces may require less maintenance than a wood-burning fireplace, don't skimp on it. If you're burning real wood in your fireplace and you have a problem, the house may smoke up and you know you have a problem. If you're burning gas inside your fireplace and you have a problem, you might not know it because it's carbon monoxide and it's deadly. Chimney cleaning typically cost about $150 to $200. Angie's List says if someone knocks on your door and offers a super low rate to clean or inspect your chimney, you should probably pass on the deal. I'm Noah Began for News 46. We will not have your weekend sports tonight, but we will have that in tomorrow's broadcast. But after these messages, we will have your weather.
News 46 weather is brought to you by your local dairy farmers. Dairy products are very important in maintaining a healthy body. Welcome back to News 46. Today is Monday, December the 29th. Today we had sunny skies and our high temperature was 51 degrees. The average temperature should have been 56 degrees. Winds were heading south-southeast at 5 miles per hour and gusts were up to 13 miles per hour. Our UV index was 1, which is low, and our humidity was at 29%. Our sunrise this morning was at 6.55 a.m. and our record high was in 1980 at 73 degrees. Tonight will be clear skies. Our low temperature will be 28 degrees and our average temperature should have been at 38 degrees. Winds will be heading northeast at 4 miles per hour and gusts up to 9 miles per hour. Humidity will be at 49% and our sunset was at 4.38 p.m. Our record low was in 1962 at 23 degrees. Tomorrow it will be mostly sunny and our high temperature will be 45 degrees with a low temperature of 25 degrees. Winds will be heading northeast at 6 miles per hour and gusts will be up to 14 miles per hour. Humidity will be 41% and our sunrise will be at 6.55 a.m. Our UV index will be at 2, so that is low. For our seven-day forecast, it will be partly cloudy on Tuesday and there will be a 50% chance of snow showers on Wednesday. It will be mostly sunny for the rest of the week into the weekend and again partly cloudy on Monday. Our high temperatures will be within the low 40s up to 60s and our low temperatures will be in the low 20s into the mid 20s. Excuse me, I meant to say mid 30s. But a winter storm advisory has been issued for our area by the National Weather Service. It is effective starting Tuesday afternoon through the morning hours of New Year's Day. The Weather Service advisory said travel might be difficult if not impossible on area roads starting Tuesday night into New Year's Day. A trace of snow up to three inches is expected in most areas above 2,000 feet with locally higher amounts possible. Be safe and take precautions during this winter storm warning. That does it for this edition of News 46. I'm Jennifer Moots. From everyone up here at News 46 and KACE Radio 95.9, we hope you have a great evening and we'll see you here again tomorrow night. Until then, good night.